Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Christina Akins. I um, recognize a couple of you uh, from other events that we're even having today, this very day. Um, I, uh, my role is uh, running the writing consulting programs at um, Tufts through the STAR Center, which stands for the, or um, stands for Student Accessibility and Academic Resource Center. Um, so today's um, workshop is going to focus specifically, it's specifically for dissertation and thesis writers. Um, so if you're still in coursework, uh, and I mean if you're still in coursework and not also at the same time writing a thesis, because I know that sometimes happens, but if you're if you're only in coursework, just know that um, this was intended to be for thesis and dissertation writers. So um, I'm happy to answer questions at the end if, you, if it's not clear how you would adapt it for coursework. Um, but I did want to have that focus um, for this session. Um, the other thing I just wanted to note is that, um, like with many of these workshops, you're not required to have your video on. It's nice to see your faces, but you don't have to um, do that. Um, you can answer questions in the chat if, um, if we're having a conversation, or you can um, either raise your hand or just kind of boldly uh, put yourself out there and answer a question if we have, um, you know, uh, have a moment where we're doing that. Um, but a lot of what I'm going to actually do is have you reflecting and writing um, quietly to for yourself. And so um, that makes for like a slightly awkward or weird um, feel to the workshop, especially in the remote setting sometimes. But um, I do think that that reflection and that um, uh, the writing piece of it, um, I'm hoping will be very helpful for you. So I'm gonna, um, I do have a PowerPoint um, just because it helps us to stay focused. So I'm gonna, oh darn, darn, I did it again. I have a tendency to start the slideshow before I have shared my screen. Okay, let's do this. Okay, um, hopefully you can see that. Give me a little nod if you can see a PowerPoint. Okay, great. Um, okay, so in today's uh, workshop, we're gonna reflect on and explore your writing process um, and try to identify some productive strategies for you. So just a note on this, um, I wish very much that there was one way to write a a thesis or dissertation and that it worked for everyone and that only I knew how to do it and that I could explain it to you and then um, everyone would get everything that they ever wanted and maybe I would even be rich but that isn't the case um, but actually one of the nice things about writing in a way it's kind of the most frustrating and the most rewarding thing about writing at the same time which is that there's a lot of different ways to do it and you can find your own way of doing it so i might make a few suggestions here and there are things that generally work for most people but just keep in mind if that isn't going to work for you um, maybe there's a way that you can think about the the overall uh thing that you're trying to accomplish in a way that you personally could could do that for yourself. So I'm not going to do a lot of what they call per, like prescription, prescriptive type of things. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, instead, we're going to try to figure out what, um, how you might build on the things that you do well and, um, and try to uh, address some of the challenges that you have with the strengths that you have. Um, we're also going to spend some time thinking about uh, planning out time for writing and setting goals um, that will be helpful for your writing. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'm, I have this chart and you can kind of see it. I think it's maybe cut off a little bit at the top. And um, 
what I would like you to do is up at the top of your screen, you should, if you hover at the top with your cursor, you should be able to see a little annotate um, section up there. Do you see what I'm, I'm talking about? And if you click on that, <clears throat> you should get a couple of options, like maybe a stamp. Um, okay, great. So uh, for fun to just get us warmed up, um, I'd love for you to um, mark on this chart what you um, feel about these different statements. And um, it's agree somewhat and disagree. So um, just put a stamp in the little column for what you agree disagree or kind of feel neutral about for each of these statements about writing. And there's no like right or wrong answer, just so you know. Okay, um, you can keep doing this if, uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to um, finish your responses, but um, I think this gives enough, us enough to at least begin a conversation here. So um, something interesting, uh, so there, uh, first of all, you can see that there's not a clear consensus on any, uh, any one of these um, areas and part of the idea here is to show you that um, there are different um, attitudes toward writing, different processes that people use and that sort of thing. Um, but I wanted to maybe see if we could share a couple of thoughts on some of this. And I wanted to start with the certain conditions um, because uh, I feel like this is a particular um, topic that it could be useful to discuss in the um, remote COVID setting. Um, would anybody be so brave as to say why they chose agree with this, um, that needing to have certain conditions and what that means for you? So um, if you either want to throw something in the chat or if you want to raise your hand or if you just want to unmute yourself and tell us what, what made you say that you need certain conditions. Um, I'll just, I'll, I'll talk. Um, so I work, obviously I'm working at home and my boyfriend also works at home and he is on a lot of phone calls. So my certain conditions are kind of like dependent on that a little bit. So I try to get up early in the morning because I find if I've already started my writing before he's on phone calls and such, then I can kind of maintain the focus, but it's hard if I don't kind of get a head start on that to get focused. I just get distracted super easily. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, and so sharing space, uh, it has become suddenly even more, um, more of an sometimes obstacle um, than it was before, yeah. Um, anybody else want to share um, why they said that they needed certain conditions to write or what that means to you? I see that there's a couple of chats. Um, yeah, second. maybe I can comment on that. So like as Kara mentioned, sometimes it's easier if I have a large block of time. So I. I know I won't get 
interrupted at some point. I would like my flow of ideas would go on paper and this helps me continue writing and typing, editing. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And you are certainly not alone. A lot of people feel that way. Um, do you uh, do you feel like you, um, does that hold you back in any kind of way? Yeah, so like it depends on how busy my day is or like how's my um, schedule because like uh, this is my second year in my PhD and we need to do a second year paper while taking classwork at the same time. So to balance between like working on research and keeping up with my classwork sometimes is a, a bit challenging for like in terms of writing and also in terms of time management in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one thing that we're going to um, try to touch on later on is how you can use maybe different um, different uh, amounts of time for different kinds of writing tasks that you might have. Um, because indeed, uh, I also uh, greatly prefer to have a large block of time, but sometimes that's just not available to you. So maybe there might be some ways of um, thinking about it differently. Great. Um, does anybody want to comment on the, um, let's see, oh, oops, gave you a preview. Um, uh, there was another one that I thought um, people seem to be um, less in agreement about, which is, um, I don't mind writing, but I hate revising or changing what I've written. Um, although it does seem like disagree is um, maybe the biggest um, response. I'm just curious if anybody had any um, insight into why you uh, said that you don't feel this way. So uh, it could just be the way I wrote the question too um, and how you interpreted it, but um, I'm curious if anybody has any thoughts on that. Um, Christina, just to uh, uh, piggyback on the, might be the last point, but um, there's a couple of notes in the chat about being in the right mindset. Oh, thank you. It. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes, the right mood. Um, yes, I actually just read something about this kind of recently. Um, and Yes. Um, so there's like two sides to this coin, right? On the one hand, I think um, uh, building a routine of writing is really, really important when you're working on a, a long project um, because it's the best way to sort of um, continue to go with something. And, and sometimes you can trick yourself into being in, in the mood <laughs> to write every once in a while, you can trick yourself um, or you can try to, you know, entice yourself. I know someone, um, a graduate student a few years ago, she used to um, specifically create an environment for herself. Um, so she would have a playlist that she always played and she would make tea at a certain time and she would, you know, really try to create the conditions as much as possible to make it super enjoyable for herself so that she would feel like doing it. Um, but at the same time, I totally agree with what Nate is saying about uh, sometimes you just can't, <laughs> you just can't trick yourself into doing it. Um, and it is better at that point, probably to walk away, um, right? So it could be that you use your time in a different way um, and that, that would be the more productive thing to do um, and that maybe you can find a different time for writing later. So maybe one thing to, to make a note about too is like, how might you create the conditions that could work for you in this environment, even if they're not the ideal conditions that you would like to have, because, um, you know, a lot of people, for example, like to work in the library and it might be only somewhat available to you right now. So, um, or, you know, just other things like that. 
Uh, did anyone feel like talking about the um, writing and revising question at all? Either in the chat or the, sorry that I kept missing the chat. Or like how you interpreted it, or even just any of the other comments that, or um, statements that you felt like you wanted to touch base about. Yeah, I have a I have a comment about um, the I don't mind writing, but I hate revising. Um, I I find that uh, I agree with this statement. Um, sometimes it's you feel like you have to kind of you can write it and then you can't really revise it right away. You need to like sleep on it or like come back and look at it before you can revise it. And this is kind of an annoying thing for me where it's like, well, no, I can't possibly revise it just yet because I've just written it. And uh, I feel like I always have to have, have to put space between me and what I've just written before I can revise it. And that I feel is so slow. And then I, oh, I just need to work on another chunk then come back. And it's kind of frustrating in that sense. Yes. Um... Well, it sounds like you're doing right, writing the right way, um, in case that makes you feel better. Um, the, process oh, can be, <laughs> the process can be a little bit frustrating. And I, I hear from um, writers all the time saying, uh, I feel, I'm a slow writer. I know that I take a long time. Um, guess what? <laughs> writing takes a long time. So it's not you. Um, and I think that we often um, compare our speed um, with something imaginary that actually isn't um, maybe even there. Or it's possible that you have a friend or somebody who, a colleague who seems like they're making a lot of progress when you're not. And um, I can only say that they have other problems. So, <laughs> um, but really, I, it is um, very difficult to revise if you don't give yourself that uh, that time away from it. Um, that amount of time could change depending on what it is that you're doing. And I, I do think it's okay to um, move forward with something and then go back and look at something, you know, um, mm -hmm. do kind of hold, hold the two um, and go back and forth between those things a lot of times. Um, but indeed, uh, revising itself is something that you need distance for. Thank you. Is there anything that anybody, uh, if this brought up a question for you or something that you really wanted to talk about? I have a, a question for the revising. So ideally, as you said, it, it's it's good to kind of step away from your work and come back to it. But when there is a time crunch, that's obviously really difficult. So do you have any suggestions on kind of getting over that hump of going from writing right to revising mm -hmm. when you are kind of in a rush? Yes. Um... I think that again, you can, there are ways that you can, um, I keep using this term, trick yourself. And I don't know if I, um, I don't know if that's really the right, the best term, but um, you can, there are ways to create distance, uh, even if you don't have the time to create the distance sort of um, in a natural way. So I do think that um, you, you have to kind of close the computer for a little while at least, but um, there are a lot of uh, strategies you can use to create distance. One of them, um, it sounds very simple, but one of them is to print out what you wrote. Um, another is to read aloud what you wrote, um, ideally from a printed out version rather than the version on the screen. Um, and the reason why this works is because our, our mind seems to fill in gaps um, when we read silently. And also somehow uh, electronically, there's a 
filling in the gaps thing that happens. Um, and so if you have something concrete that is a printout, for example, um, sometimes that can really help a lot. Um, another thing that you could do is um, go through and um, just try to um, try different strategies for figuring out what the overall um, structure of your piece is. So like one is to, um, for example, highlight all of the um, topic sentences. And if you can't find the topic sentence, then that's instant revision pro <laughs> problem right there. Um, but if you, um, you know, the just the simple um, highlighting of it can really help with organization. Um, taking it a step further, you could make a reverse outline, make an outline from, from what you already wrote and see if that feels like it's everything is in the order that you intended. Um, and then if you really want to go like even further with it and your main concern has to do with say, being concise or um, the clarity of your sentences, you could read um, read the piece backwards. And when I, I don't literally mean um, from the end of the sentence to the front of the sentence, but uh, but I do mean from the end of the um, paper to the beginning, so that you're reading it in the reverse order. Um, it again tricks your mind into focusing in on what's actually on the page rather than what you think you wrote. Um, so those are just a couple of strategies that you could use. Um, and obviously, if you do have time, um, one of the best ways to work on revising your writing is to get some feedback on it. And that doesn't necessarily have to be from your advisor. It could be from someone in your department. It could be from a writing consultant. Um, but sometimes it's really hard to like have that distance, have that sense of um, clarity about your own <laughs> clarity, if you will. <laughs> Thank you. I think um, I have a comment and a question. I agree with your strategy of uh, revising your work by doing a reverse outline. I tried it like um, outlining my writing after I'm done writing it and sometimes it helps a lot. But my question is, I like I struggle with postponing my writing until I'm done with all of the research, like the, the first point, which is not the best strategy and <laughs> it's not really efficient. So any suggestions for how to tackle that? Yes, um, my best suggestion for that is to blur the boundary between the research and the writing by writing about all of the research that you do. Um, do you have, uh, when you say research, is it like a lab research or is it more uh, library research? Yeah, mostly library. So um, I'm doing economics I, like, I, and I love reading. Mm -hmm. So I keep going through a long reading list and I say like, after I'm done with my reading list, I will start writing, but it doesn't really help. <laughs> Oh, um, I feel like you're a, a reader after my own heart because I feel very similarly. I also love to read and I just like to like sort of lose myself in that, you know, so I get it. Um, I would recommend that the first thing that you might try doing um, just to start out is uh, at the end of each day of reading or each session of reading or however you want to think about it, um, do a free write. So free write about what you read um, and just kind of get some thoughts down. Um, and then the next step I would do is um, to keep a notebook um, as you're reading and write down um, things that occur to you as you're, as you're reading what you're reading. Um, and then at the end of the article that you're working on or or the chapter or whatever it may be, like when you're at a stopping point, um, write a summary of what you read and 
think about how it connects to what you're trying to research. So just write a paragraph about that. Um, and the reason why I say a notebook is that I do think, again, um, we're so, our laptop is like our whole world right now. <laughs> And so I kind of feel like any time that you can get away from it, I have like three journals going on right now because I mean like physical journals because uh, I have them each for different things um, because I need to have that away from the screen time. So um, I'm not saying you have to do it that way, but sometimes it's nice to um, look away from what you're reading or and also look away from the laptop and write something down by hand. Um, so that would be my first thing to say. I think people sometimes in grad school, they highlight things in, um, in a book or on a, on a um, like in an article or they annotate in the margins. I think that if you can take that a step further and actually write um, a, a couple of sentences or a paragraph about each thing that you write um, or each thing that you read, it will help you retain it better and it will help guide you towards like what it is that you're gonna write eventually. Does that help? Yeah, sure. Like going from a written summary to like my actual writing is uh, I, I think like should be an easier transition from old reading and then old writing. Yeah, exactly. I think um, you're sort of uh, documenting for yourself your your thought process so that you can then, and then you can use that summary, like you said, and kind of bring it into the sort of more formal um, writing that you have going. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna... Um, this has been really fun to talk about. Um, I'm gonna move on for the sake of time, but we can always come back to this. Um, I need to get rid of these. Ah, here we go. Um, so I'm going to ask you to, hopefully you have, do have a notebook or something with you. Um, and I'm going to ask you to write by hand, um, about a few things and this is just for you, but you could share out, um, later if you wish. And we're going to do timed writing. So, um, this is a version of free writing. If you're not familiar with the concept of free writing, it is pretty much what it sounds like, um, which is that you just write without um, censoring yourself, if you will. Um, and often you can do free writing just to get down your thoughts or um, clear your mind uh, before you start other things. Um, it can be a kind of meditative process if you would like it to be. Um, and true true free writing, if you will, um, doesn't have a prompt. So you're just writing whatever comes to mind. In this case, we're gonna do some prompts, um, but the idea is for you to just write without worrying about, you know, how you're saying it or what you're saying, just like let your ideas flow. So the first question that I have for you um, is kind of a funny question. Um, and you can answer it however you want to. But um, those of you who are writing a thesis or dissertation or um, you know, a final project, whatever it may be, why are you writing it? Um, so we're gonna do two minutes for that question. Uh, I'm gonna um, actually move on to well, I'm gonna move on to another question, but I might have to stop sharing for a second. Um, I just wanted to mention why I asked this question, um, which is that I do think that we sometimes lose sight of what we're doing a little bit um, when we're in the middle of it. Um, so sometimes it's nice to reconnect with um, 
what your own goals are. And even if that's a matter of like, I just need to write this thesis so that I can get my degree and like do what I want to do with my life. That's totally fine. Um, so, you know, reconnecting with whatever the motivation that is that you have, um, Again, you know, I'm hearing from a lot of people that motivation is a struggle right now. So anytime that you can reconnect with what it is, why you're doing the thing that you're doing and what, why it's important to you is, is great. Um, for some reason, I'm having a little bit of trouble moving the PowerPoint right now. Um, so I'm just gonna stop that for a second. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna ask the next question before I share the PowerPoint again. And here it is. What do you like about your writing process? Um, what do you wanna keep about what's happening with your writing and what, what's working? So we'll do two minutes on that question. What do you like about your writing and your writing process? Um, I have one more question for you and then we'll talk about what you wrote um, if you want to. So the last question, maybe predictably, is what are the challenges that you're facing? Um, what kinds of things would you like to change? So two minutes on that and then we'll do brief. Um, so, we can, uh, you know, certainly come back to your answers to some of these questions, but just um, at the moment, is there anything that people want to discuss, something that this helped clarify for you, or um, anything along those lines, or questions? Uh, I, I guess, uh, especially this last uh, prompt um, helped me think about uh, how I'm seeing my writing task at the moment. <laughs> um, I work in a lab and I'm trying to wrap up the experiments to, to, to then write the, dis like the thesis, but obviously I have to kind of write it, start writing it already and I'm, I'm in it, uh, but I'm I kind of see that, uh, first of all, like when I know I have a writing day, um, it's harder to get started in the morning because I feel, oh, well, I don't have to go to the lab now. I'm just going to, I just have to write so I can start in a couple hours or it can happen anytime kind of thing. Um, but then at the same time, it's kind of the first thing to go out the window, like, oh, I'll, I'll just write tomorrow because, you know, it's already the afternoon, you know, whatever the evening or so it's, uh, it's kind of hard to structure it and say, well, and give it the priority it needs because no writing can't happen anytime you really do need the focus. So that's, uh, yeah, kind of seeing it for something that needs to happen right now and today and prioritizing it just the same as any other kind of manual task or something that you see, you know, that you can get the result of that same day or whatever. Absolutely. Yes, and I know you're coming in from it from a perspective of someone that works in a lab, but I can tell you that there are ways that even humanities people do the same thing. Um, <laughs> And so I know that for me, um, when I was working on my dissertation, the thing that would um, like the sort of uh, similar thing was that my, was my teaching. So I felt like um, I couldn't write on days that I taught. I couldn't, um, sometimes I couldn't even write at all during the semester because I was teaching and I was only teaching one class as a graduate student. So really I did not need 40 hours a week to teach this class. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, I can completely understand. Um, sometimes things uh, feel like they take a bigger, um, they're more urgent, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so um, how do you prioritize the writing? And I do have some um, strategies that we're going to talk about next um, for doing that, but it does require a mental commitment 
<laughs> um, because there will be some things that feel more urgent, right? So how do you get around that? Anyone else? Maybe just at least one more. Brave soul. Um, I would say something I noticed was that I'm kind of having this conflicting view of having a deadline where the deadline helps me feel like I need to be writing productively a lot, but also that deadline can be so stressful sometimes that if my writing session isn't going well, then I get more stressed about that lost time and therefore I'm kind of not productive. But on the flip side of it, it also sometimes can help me because I'm sitting down and trying to write more. So kind of that catch 22 of having a, a looming deadline. Yeah, absolutely. That, uh, that feels very relevant. Um, this is how deadlines work. Um, they both motivate you and they also stress you out. Um, and, you know, I do always feel, um, I always am skeptical of people when they say that they work best under pressure because I kind of am like, well, everybody works more, on, like they get things done under pressure, but is that really their best work? Um, so, you know, um, I think that as much as, po as you can to kind of focus on the positive aspects of the deadline, um, but also to be kinder to yourself when um, things don't quite go as planned because um, sadly writing is not an, an incredibly efficient um, thing to do. Uh, it requires a lot of going back to it, a lot of um, thinking. Um, often thinking is not considered part of the process. In fact, you really do have to sometimes give yourself that space as well. So, um, you know, especially under the circumstances that we're in, I think any time that you can remind yourself to be kind to yourself, talk to yourself as though you were your own friend instead of, <laughs> instead of yourself, what, what pep talk would you give your friend? Um, or maybe just talk to a friend and maybe they will give you the pep talk too. So, yeah. Great. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that as this, you know, as we keep um, doing a couple of exercises, some things will um, come just sort of come to the forefront as strategies that you can use. Um, but one thing I would encourage you to do is think about how you can use the strengths that you wrote about to address the challenges that you have. Sometimes there's not a direct match, um, but sometimes you can pull out the skills that you have from your strengths and think about how you could address the, the challenges with it. Okay, with your permission, I'm gonna shift gears just slightly. And I'm gonna, um, we're, since it has come up a couple of times, um, I feel like it won't be that shocking for us to talk about scheduling time to write um, and setting goals for writing. So the, uh, the very first thing that I would suggest, and this is super hard, I just wanna tell you this is hard for me too, but um, treat writing time like a regular meeting that you have. So put it in your calendar and you are not available for other things. Um, and the, the reason the the reason why it's hard um, is for many of the reasons why we've already discussed, but also because if your advisor is like, well, I really want to meet with you at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, and that's your writing time, it's going to be really, really hard for you to say, I'm not available at that time. But guess who would do it to you? Your advisor. <laughs> Because that's how they get stuff done. They tell people that they're not available when they're writing or when they're doing their research, right? So um, you're an academic. This is your job. So um, my, that is my very first, and if you take nothing else away, 
you know, that would be a great strategy for you. Um, treat it the way that you would any, any other meeting that you have or any kind of commitment that is un, un, unmovable. Now, of course you can move it if you give yourself permission. Um, but the, you know, the least you can, or the most amount of time that you can try to preserve it, the better. Um, think about uh, different amounts of time that you can use for different tasks. So a couple of people have mentioned they like to have like a really, like, or, or maybe even a writing day or, um, you know, a large chunk of time to, to write. And so maybe that's for when you do certain kinds of writing. So maybe you need that time um, when you're either starting something off or right in the middle of it, that sort of thing. But maybe there's other things you could do with shorter periods of time. Um, and this can be different for different people. But for example, maybe uh, if you know that um, you're almost finished with a revision process, but you need to kind of read through something um, one more time just to make sure everything is in place, or if you just wanna focus on one particular section um, in terms of editing, you could set that a time aside and use the larger chunks for when you really need to um, immerse yourself in it, right? Um, because there are kind of different mindsets that you have. The writing, when you're really in the writing stages, I feel kind of goofy saying this, but it's almost like there's a, a little bit of a, an unconscious mind that kind of kicks in. Um, whereas when you're editing, you kind of can't edit that way. You have to be very conscious um, and very proactive when you're editing. So um, I find that that mindset aspect of it also plays into the amount of time that you might need for it as well. Um, it's a little tiny bit easier to uh use shorter period of periods of time for more specific revision or editing tasks. Um, another thing is to develop an accountability system of some kind and maybe there's maybe you have more than one. Um, so I have this uh, grand idea that someday I am gonna find some people like my ideal number is like four. Um, who will be in my writing group and they will, will like all write together at the same time and it'll be great. Um, right now I have like one friend that can give me one hour once a week and then I've got another friend who can give me an hour at a different time during the week. And so we just parse it out that way. Um, it's not my ideal way of having a writing group, but it helps me um, when I am working with another person. Um, so one of my friends and I developed a Google spreadsheet and we put our goals into their spreadsheets and we um, then report out what we did. Um, we break it down by the day and we leave each other little notes of encouragement. <laughs> so, you know, it's very, uh, to use a, um, trendy term right now, it's asynchronous. Um, we are not even meeting. We're just kind of leaving each other little notes. Um, but it actually helps me to know that someone cares that I'm <laughs> making progress on my, um, on my goals that I'm making. And it also helps me to remember to make the goals in the first place. Um, so another thing is to keep those personal goals in mind. Um, what I mean is, um, you know, remember why you're doing the thing that you're doing, um, what is the end result going to look like, um, and what are the different parts that you need in order to get there. Um, it is important to build in time for feedback and revision. So in case anybody isn't aware, um, like if you haven't shown your advisor something yet, please know your advisor will have comments. <laughs> Um, maybe you'll be the lucky person that doesn't get any comments, but 
almost everyone <laughs> um, gets some kind of feedback. So it could be, um, you know, in terms of the style that you're writing in, it could be the content that you're working on, uh, could be a lot of different kinds of things, but they, um, they almost feel, I think, um, compelled even to give you comments like it would they're they're not doing their job as the advisor if they don't give you feedback so um even if you've never had that kind of experience before where you're getting a lot of feedback on your writing do know if you haven't already experienced this that that's part of it so you can't um you can't really schedule your overall project time without building in time for um, having your advisor read it and tell you what they think. And then um, the last thing I'd say is don't forget to give yourself breaks and time off. Um, it might not look like what other people do. It might not be on the weekends, for example. It might not be in the evenings. It depends on what your schedule is like, but um, you can't actually work all of the time and writing can't happen all of the time either. Um, the the there's this feeling that because you're at home all your time the time and all you really need is this laptop <laughs> this laptop um, that you could just be working um on something all the time but your brain just won't it'll eventually be like i'm not doing this anymore um and uh i personally feel that in the remote setting that this i i hit my exhaustion level sooner um, so if you feel like that too, um, you might want to remember that you do need time away from your work. Um, so one kind of simple way to do this and to help with motivation is the Pomodoro technique. Um, do people already use this? Do they know about it? I will just briefly explain it. I don't know. I. I meant to research this before starting the workshop because I can't, I do not know why it's called Pomodoro. Um, Pomodoro is just the Italian word for tomato. I do not know why they call it that. Um, if anyone knows, throw it in the chat and I would be grateful, but it's very simple. The idea is um, that you, um, anytime that you are doing a task and it's often used for writing, that you break it into a period of um, being on and a period of break. So it's also kind of like Tabata if you do that in exercise or some, or like, um, what else do they call it? Um, now I forget, uh, in exercise it's called something else too. But anyway, the amount of time on and off depends on who you are. A very common way to do it is to do like 45 or 50 minutes of writing and then 15 or 10 minutes of break. Um, but you don't have to do, you know, if that feels like a too long, um, you could do 20 minutes of writing and five minutes off. Um, it's, it doesn't matter. But the idea is that you, during that writing time, you are super focused on what you're doing. And then you reward yourself by stretching or walking around or just getting off of the computer for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so if you want an easy way to kind of get into this, um, you know, uh, working and breaking kind of thing, and it feels like a good thing to do in the remote setting, um, that's where I would start for sure. Any comments or questions on, on these things? Does anybody use that Pomodoro strategy? I kind of personally do it for a while and then I sort of fall off the wagon and forget that I was doing it and have to recommit. So the other thing I would just love for you to take away from this workshop is that it's okay if you get out of your habit or if you get out of your whatever and then you realize it and you get, you recommit to it, that's perfectly <laughs> acceptable. Um, I also wanna to touch on setting goals 
and then we'll um, do a little activity together. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, with goal setting, you wanna be doing a couple of things simultaneously. You wanna have like long-term goals and short-term goals. And you wanna various levels of what long and term short-term means, right? So maybe you have a semester goal, maybe you even have a goal beyond the semester, maybe that's too much. Um, but you also want to have, say you wanna know what you wanna do each month, even if you know that at the end of the semester you have some big deadline um, each week and each day. It sounds, I mean, if you're not, if you don't naturally think this way, and I certainly don't, it feels kind of oppressive, but <laughs> um, if you can try to identify what it is that you wanna do within those periods of times, it's really gonna help you to um, both stay motivated and make progress. Um, so I also included each session. Um, what I mean by that is just, it just depends on whether you write every day or don't, right? So maybe you don't have a daily goal for your writing because you don't write every day. Every time that you sit down to write, you have a, a goal. Um, and then also be specific about what exactly you need to know. So I was working with a grad student last week and she was like, or what, okay, so two weeks ago, she was like, on Wednesday, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish my chapter by Wednesday and I'm gonna send it to my advisor. Okay. Um, and then the next time I talked to her, she hadn't done it. So she's like, okay, so my goal again is by Wednesday, I'm going to um, finish my chapter and send it to my uh, advisor. And I was like, you know, that's a good goal, but like, what does that mean, finish your chapter? And so once we had that question, then I felt like, oh, now, <laughs> now, because it was still a vague goal for her, right? Um, she didn't know what it meant to finish the chapter really. So anytime that you can be really specific, I'm going to write this section, I'm going to write this paragraph, I'm going to figure out what this thing means, I'm going to write a summary of this article. Um, it sounds, again, like too much planning, um, but it really can help you to um, also feel accomplishment, um, which is super important in terms of keeping your um, energy levels up. I would say that if your deadline is within three months, a backwards plan is a great idea. And if you're not familiar with that, it's pretty much what it sounds like. Um, you start with the end goal and you work backwards to figure out how you're gonna meet that goal. And then finally, again, don't, take, don't forget to take breaks. Um, don't schedule yourself for writing time on a holiday if you observe that holiday because you're observing the holiday. <laughs> if you're not, then it might be a nice time um, to work on something, but um, you know, be honest with yourself about when you are going to um, both need a break or, or spend time with someone, right? That's also important to keep your relationships going. Okay, so um, what I'd like you to do just kind of like as a brainstorm is try to figure out what could be better about these goals. Um, I already kind of gave you the example of the second one, um, but let's work on that one for a second and say, like when someone says finish this chapter, what kinds of things do you think that they might mean? or you could put it in the chat. Can you think of a, um, a task that, like if you felt you were close to the end of something, a task that you would need to do before you were able to say it was finished?
Okay, so yes, um, Kara put in the chat, it might mean editing or it might mean writing the contextual material if the analysis is in incomplete. Yeah. Um, right, so again, um, maybe, uh, maybe she needed, maybe this person I was working with needed to edit. It turned out that she wanted to um, do that, right? Um, read each part aloud and make sure that um, it sounded good before she sent it off because she was worried about her advisor's reaction to her writing style. Um, that was something that was concerning her. So that's what she wanted to focus on. So um, whatever that may look like for you, but just kind of like think about what the actual task is. So um, what about the first one? On Saturdays, I will work on my thesis. How might you think about either breaking down what that means or having a better way of thinking about that goal? could be something more specific definitely like on Saturdays I will work on the figure legends for my figures something kind of small smaller that or at least that you can kind of build on <laughs> start small and build on yeah exactly um I hear a lot of times people are like oh um yeah on this one day that's when I work on my thesis um, and, um, yeah, so, uh, an example, people are giving different examples of like specific things that they might work on, um, whether it's write a certain section or revise a certain section or whatever that may be, um, so that you know what you're, know what you're going to do when you sit down to do it, um, which will make the time feel more productive. Um, it's, you know, if the first step that you need is to just block out the time for writing, start there, do that. Um, but if you can take it a step further and figure out what you're going to do during that writing time, that's great. Um, and sometimes that will be um, different kinds of writing tasks. Right, so maybe it's writing certain sections, maybe it's revising or editing. Um, the last thing I would say about this is, if you really, really wanna take it that extra oomph um, to the next level, at the end of your writing session, set your goal for your next one. So um, don't wait until the beginning of the writing session to set the goal, um, try to think of what you'll do next. And that'll help you even start the thinking process towards the next one. Okay, so I actually wanna take a couple of minutes right now to make you make good on this <laughs> idea. And I want you to open your calendar or you can work on a piece of paper or a planner, whatever you use. And I want you to make one Set aside one writing time for this week and a goal for it. So just take a few minutes to do that. Hopefully you had enough time to do one, at least one uh, writing related goal setting activity right then. Um, so I actually, I, I'm skipping ahead and then I'm going to go back. Um, since we're already thinking about it, uh, I would like you to, um, just think about one thing, write it down, um, that you can do this week to meet your goal for your writing. Maybe you already did it by setting the time aside, um, but just take one more minute and think about like one thing that you could do, concrete action. Um, 
Thank you, Angela. I'm sorry about all of the stopping and starting. Um, okay, so I am about to move into kind of like summarizing uh, time um, and uh, letting you know about a few resources. But before I do, I just wanted to see if there are any um, questions that anyone has or things that you want to um, talk about before we move into that part. Um, and I'm always happy to stay on for questions too, but just want to see if there's anything that a burning thing you need to discuss or question. Okay. Um, well, I have a couple of whoops, whoopsie whoops, a couple of just ch tips. These are all things that we talked about. Um, well, I guess we kind of didn't talk about the first one in a way, although we did it stealthily. Um, the best way to become a more productive writer is to write more. <laughs> and it sounds like a stupid thing to say, but, um, and what I mean though, is that um, to think about building writing in in a different kind of way than like it's separate from say for example your reading or from your research um, if you can um, even just in one area uh, write a little bit more and I don't necessarily mean for anyone else to see um, it could just be notes that you keep for yourself um, summaries that you do, that sort of thing, um, because it does actually help you, um, even when you sit down for the more formal parts, if you've done some informal writing um, to, so that it feels less like you're starting from nothing, right? Um, schedule writing time and set goals for each session. Break down as much as possible what you actually need to do. Um, something that we didn't really talk about either is that um, when you read an academic paper you enjoy, um, if you have the chance, think about why that was well done. Um, because I think we, again, we read a lot for content, um, especially in our research. Um, and sometimes you come across something that you're like, wow, that was really well done. Um, so if you can emulate that thing, then that would be... Um, really nice. Just don't put too much pressure on yourself because remember they probably revised that a lot and spent a lot of time on it. Um, but if there's something that you can take away from it, that that's ideal. Um, if you can show your writing to other people, it doesn't necessarily have to be your advisor right off the bat. Um, they are eventually going to need to read it. Um, and so sometimes you can um, become more comfortable with that idea if you show it to other people. And um, lastly, if you can find some kind of accountability buddy or a writing group, or if you join a writing group that already exists, that's going to help as well, I think. Um, especially, again, since we are in this remote environment, we don't have as much connection to our community. It can be very helpful to have that connection. Um, so as a reminder, um, the Star Center has graduate writing consultants. They can meet with you um, individually to work on your writing at any stage in the process that it's in. So you don't have to have even written anything yet. You could um, make an appointment just to talk through your ideas. That can also often be very helpful. Um, they can help you plan out how you want to um, get your writing you know, get, get your words down onto um, an actual draft. They can provide a reader's feedback on drafts um, as you're working on them and help you clarify your organization, your argument, things like that, your stylistic choices. Um, they are not probably not going to be in your field, so they're going to come at it from the perspective of trying to understand it um, as, an, as a kind of outsider, which can be clarifying in terms of um, what's coming across. And then they can also help you develop and meet goals for your writing. Um, we also have writing groups and retreats. There are a couple of people here from our retreat today. So um, glad that you came to this as well. Um, we will have another one in the summer, probably in June. Um, we also have a uh, 
weekly writing group called Writer's Block. It's only for graduate students and it's on Fridays from nine to 12. If you're not already um, connected with that, you can either email me or sometimes you'll see the name Taylor Parrish. I never know if I should really like put Taylor's name on everything. Um, either one of us can help you uh, to get on the mailing email list. Um, and it meets, uh, it will meet every Friday um, unless there's a holiday or something. Um, and so you can um, know that you don't have to come this week. You could come next week. I hope you come this week though. <laughs> and it can help you with accountability. So, um, you know, just a reminder, if this doesn't, if this time doesn't work for you, um, find somebody to work with you at a different time, right? Um, lots of grad students are looking for accountability right now. Um, and then I also just wanted to mention that in, in addition to writing support, we also have academic coaching that's available for grad students. Um, and so uh, one thing that academic coaches can help with is that goal setting stuff. So if you want to work with someone who you kind of don't even want to get into like the conversation of the, about the writing, you just want to have someone like to check in with um, in terms and to help you develop manageable goals. Um, you could use an academic coach instead if that sounds like a better um, choice for you. They can also help with um, things like test taking, reading strategies, presentation skills, and statistics software, um, if you need any of those things. And finally, the STAR Center also offers accommodations for students with disabilities. So if you um, are uh, um, if you have had accommodations in the past and you're not registered um, with the STAR Center, please reach out to them. Um, or if you have questions about um, their services, they're always happy to, my colleagues are always happy to answer questions about it. Um, and then I just have some links, which I'll, I'll send the slides along so that you can um, have those links. We have our own appointment system, um, Tutor Finder. So, that's how you would make an appointment. And that is my, uh, the sort of presentation aspect of things. Um, I wanna thank you for participating and um, taking the time to reflect on your writing. Um, and I hope that it was helpful to do that reflection. Um, and I'm very happy to hang around for a while and talk or answer questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Um, I'm popping a survey in the chat if people could um, could fill this out for me. We'd really appreciate it. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, share it via email as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.